and welcome to Little Rock, Arkansas. It has been a day, let me tell you. Um, actually, let me not tell you. I will talk about that later, but I have to show you guys my Airbnb because this is my little Victorian cottage for the weekend. And I'm so excited. Let me show you around. Okay, I will do my best to show you um, this from this camera angle, but you walk in the front door and there's this lovely antique desk to greet you, as well as the living room here. Nice size. This property is kind of like a walkthrough style. You'll see what I mean in a minute, but we have a huge map of Little Rock right here. And then we walk through to my favorite room, I think, which is the kitchen. And you can see we have original flooring, which is just my favorite thing in old houses. I love it. This kitchen is so cozy somehow. Um, the ceilings are really high, but somehow it just feels so homey in here with all the little lights and everything. We've got a really fun antique chair over here. Some built-ins, we love a good built-in here. Oh, look at these pictures. How sweet are these pictures? I love that. Um, Full-size fridge. I've been looking for one of these shelving units in the thrift forever. I'm gonna find one eventually. Um, and our dining table, of course. And then here is the bedroom, equally cozy. So cozy in here. Got some antique furniture again. This is the closet. I love the little built-ins. And look, this is a picture of the house in 1905 when it was built. How cool is that? I just love it with all the little people out in the front yard. That is just so fun. And then you come back here, we've got the washer and dryer and the bathroom, which has that lovely vintage looking tile. And the tub also has the lovely vintage looking tile. There's just like a typical shower, but we've got towels, blankets, sheets, everything. But definitely my favorite room has to be the kitchen. Here it is from another angle. I mean, I don't know, it's just so homey in this kitchen, but let me show you a sneak peek down the street out of this window. Look at the house next door. Look at the turret. Oh my gosh. And then all the other little Victorian houses on the street. Apparently the owner lives down the street, so I'm betting he has one of those amazing houses out the window, but I love it. The only thing that's mildly unsettling are these ducks on the wall. I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm used to looking at fish and other ocean creatures all the time because I live near the beach, but like, I don't, I don't know. I just, they're kind of unsettling to me. I don't know if they're like taxidermy or if they're just, I don't know. They look far too realistic for me. Like I, I don't, <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. It's a few hours later. <laughs> I have been standing up pacing around this house while I eat my Little Caesars pizza and drink my Mountain Dew out of a beer glass because I can't, I've been sitting so many hours today, I physically cannot sit, like I cannot bring myself to do it. So I'm standing, pacing, and enjoying my house. <laughs> but, mm. Let me tell you a short condensed version of how I got here today. This is why I keep saying in every vlog, I hate Atlanta and I, mm. condensed version. So I don't waffle all night to you guys. I left Savannah at 9 a.m. this morning, 9 a.m. for a flight that left Atlanta at 4.10 p.m. p.m. Yeah, and thank goodness I did, because if I hadn't, I would have missed my flight, and here's why. I got stuck in traffic on 75, had to take a detour and add an extra hour to my drive, but in total, after all the traffic, my drive ended up being six hours, and it was supposed to be three hours and 45 minutes. 
I knew that would be a lie, but not to that extent. So six hours later, I arrived to the airport at last. I'm so happy to see it. I have to pee so bad. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's 2.45. If I can get into a parking spot and get inside, like my flight doesn't board until 4.10, I've got plenty of time. I'm golden. Little did I know. I was about to sit in traffic at the airport. At the freaking airport. I'm sitting there. I went through, I'm following the signs that say North Economy Parking because that's the only parking that had a green light, we have spots available. And I said, perfect, I'll go there, get a spot. Cause all the other ones said they were full. So I'm navigating on my GPS to that lot just in case, like I make a wrong turn, but there's construction everywhere and there's all these signs. So I'm trying to follow the actual signs because I know GPS might not be right, but I'm sitting in the terminal drop-off area, sitting, 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 15 extra minutes go by. Finally start moving. We go through a second terminal drop-off area somehow, sit another 15 minutes. By this point, I have to pee so bad. I look at the clock, it's like 3.05, it's like 3.10, something like that. And then what happens? We're at a standstill. My gas light pings in the car. Because what I did not realize, I got gas before I left Savannah this morning, full tank, great, good to go. Had a hundred extra miles of gas so I wouldn't have to get gas once I got to Atlanta. I sat in traffic for so many hours, I did not notice I had eaten up all my gas. Cora was, Cora tells me how many miles she has left before the tank is empty. She said, girl, I got 20 miles left. You better figure out this parking situation or we gonna be on the side of the road. And I started panicking. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna run out of gas sitting in the drop off line for this dumb airport and I'm not gonna be able to move and I'm gonna miss my flight and everything's gonna like be ruined. I have had a full blown panic attack. I start sweating, I can't breathe. Like I'm full blown panicking. I haven't had a, a panic attack like that since I started my anxiety meds months ago. So I'm having a full blown panic. I frantically roll down my windows to a crossing guard. I'm sitting by and I'm like, please tell me the North economy parking is close by. He's like, yeah, you're almost there. Just stay left. And I'm like, okay, stay left. So I'm freaking out. And finally, there's the sign for the North economy lot. Cora's like counting down the number. She's like, girl, 19, 18, 17. I'm like, no, please don't run out of gas. And I follow the signs and I get to the garage and it says daily parking. And I'm like, thank God. And there's two cones in front of the lanes. They're closed off because it's full. It was a lie this whole time. There's no parking. So at this point I have to pee so bad and I'm like, full on freaking out and freak out mode that I'm gonna miss my flight. It's 3.15 at this point, I have to board at 4.10. I whip into hourly, which is right next door. And I said, I don't freaking care, give me that ticket. Like I will pay whatever I have to pay, which ended up being $36 a day. Thanks a lot, Atlanta airport. But I whiz into that parking space and I am sprinting through the garage. I have to pee so bad. I run into the bathroom. I run to security and thank the Lord. I had angels watching over me today because the security line was so short and I was through there in 15 minutes, security max. And on the tram to go to the the gates. I finally get on the tram. Of course, it has no AC and I'm already dripping with sweat because I've been having a panic attack for the last 20 minutes. So I'm standing there like, and I have my big sweater on that I showed you guys that I, that I packed to wear in the airport because I thought it was going to be cold. <laughs> so I'm standing there in the tram like about to pass out. I have no water. So I had to wait until I got to the concourse, bought a bottle of water, and I downed one of my emergency anxiety meds. And I was like, please, I got to my gate with 30 minutes to spare. 30 minutes to spare, and I left at 9 a.m. Please somebody tell me how this happened. 
I still don't know what I'm gonna do when I get back because Cora is currently sitting in the parking garage at Atlanta airport with 15 miles left of gas. And I don't know if that's enough to get to me, get me to a gas station. I pray to God it is. But if it's not, we'll figure it out later because I can't, I cannot. I was so done by the time I got on my plane, I was like, oh my word, I've never been so happy to see an airport or an airplane in my entire existence. So that was my day, but we made it to Little Rock and we didn't miss our flight and we're going to have a great audition tomorrow. So yes, but you guys, I was just getting ready for my bath and we have Epsom salt. This is the best Airbnb ever. Good morning from my little Victorian street. This house next door is honestly giving me like series of unfortunate events, um, <laughs> vibes. <laughs> All right, I am pretty much ready um, to go. It is about 8.55, 9 o'clock, I want to say now. Um, it's a beautiful morning in Little Rock this morning, but it is a little bit chilly. I woke up and the house was freezing. The heat just like stopped in the middle of the night for whatever reason. So I had to recalibrate it this morning and get the heat running again. Um, but I took my hot shower to warm up. Um, and I put my hair in like this new braid. It's got a big braid across the top. Tried something new, a little bit fancy today. It looks pretty decent. Um, and I did my makeup. And I went ahead and got dressed, but I have not put on my leotard and tights yet because the audition is not until 1 p.m. We can't even go in to the place to check in until 12.15. And I just, I don't feel like sitting around in my leotard and tights for like three hours. But I am leaving this early to go downtown because I am starving. I need breakfast. Um, I'm probably gonna have to get lunch or brunch or something like before I go. So I think what my plan is, is I'm gonna go to a little coffee shop first, get a coffee, maybe a croissant or something like just to wake myself up um, and just chill. I might walk around downtown a little bit depending on how cold it is, see how walkable everything is, just see what's around, see what's there, see what's around the studio and stuff and then when it gets closer like when it gets a little bit later probably like i don't know maybe 11 o'clock 10 45 i'll go to a breakfast restaurant that i found it's called at the corner it looks amazing they have everything you could ever dream of for breakfast pancakes you name it and actually a lot of the breakfast places i looked at this morning have chicken and waffles so like, and I'm talking like fried chicken with like cheese just melted on top of it or like one place had waffles with chocolate ganache, pretzel shavings and fried chicken on the side. And I was like, is this an Arkansas thing? I did not know that. So if you're from here or you've been here, let me know if fried chicken and waffles is like specifically originating in Arkansas because that's pretty cool. I don't want a giant delicious meal that's like fried like that today just because I'm gonna dance all afternoon hopefully so we will be trying that tomorrow I think for breakfast on our day off we will get a delicious fried chicken breakfast because it sounds amazing my stomach is just more in the mood for like an avocado toast today because to be honest my nerves are still shot from traveling yesterday I'm and I'm a little bit nervous for this audition as well. And I slept pretty good last night, but I think I was having weird dreams and I'm just feeling kind of like unsettled this morning. So I just need a plain breakfast. Like I need a good avocado toast and a good coffee and, and a good croissant, um, lots of bread. <laughs> so that's what I have to do to take care of my anxiety sometimes and that's fine. We'll have a delicious, very, very thick breakfast tomorrow. But anyways, I'm ready to go. 
Um, but I wanted to tell you a couple things. First of all, like I said, the audition is from 1 to 4.30 today. We cannot go in until 12.15. Um, we did have to fill out a Google form for this. I registered for this the day that it opened in January because I was like, I want to go to this. Um, so we got an email on Thursday from the production manager that was really nice and detailed outlining like everything we needed to know for this weekend. And I thought that was awesome. So he told us to make sure we're in Little Rock and not North Little Rock, gave us the address, whole paragraph on parking and how to park and where to park and street parking's free and et cetera, et cetera. And then like, where were, what side of the street you need to be on to enter the building? Because I guess it's like, it's old, it's an old city. So it's like, I don't know, their building seems like it might be old and historic too. So I'm very excited to see it. Um, but he told us where to go in, where we would be meeting, where we would be waiting, et cetera, et cetera, which was awesome. So organized and I loved that. So I'm feeling like I know exactly where I need to go and what I need to do this morning. Um, but the Google form itself is the most detailed that I have filled out in terms of auditions. And that's why I'm excited for this audition because they asked like your basic stuff, like usual, your age. They actually asked weight on this one, which is like, mm, not a lot of places ask for weight anymore, but they did. Um, height, um, they asked about your schooling and professional company experience, so you could list that, which was great. They had um, a whole checkbox section and it was like check all that apply and you could check on what you're interested in so it was like i'm interested in classical work contemporary work i'm interested in both classical and contemporary equally i'm interested in choreography which is what i was really excited about because it sounds like there's choreography opportunities if you dance here i'm interested in community outreach and educational outreach which i also checked um I'm interested in, what was the other one? There was like two or three more things that you could click, I'm interested in this. And I was like, I love all the opportunities there seem to be here. So I'm very, very, very excited because of that one section <laughs> on the registration form. Um, they have had one audition already. They had, they were at the Grand Master audition or whatever that was held in California back in December. And it, that's where you like go, it's kind of expensive, but you can go and audition for like five or six different companies at the same time because all the directors sit in on the class like together and then they pick who they want, I guess. Um, I've never done it. I almost did it this year, but I was like, there weren't very many companies that I was actually interested in. So I thought I'll just wait and I'll just go. But this is the only other audition Ballet Arkansas is having besides that one. So I don't know how many people will be there today, but I'm kind of hoping it's a smaller audition today. But I mean, that's wishful thinking always. Um, but I'm very, very excited for this one. I think it has good potential and it has great opportunities. And their website does say they are a top 100 ballet company. So I'm excited, but I'm gonna call my Lyft now because I am actually starving and I need coffee. So let us head downtown to downtown Arkansas together and I will show you some of the sites and show you what I'm eating for breakfast. Um, but first, I will show you my outfit of the day before we go because I promised you that I would. Um, so let me show you that. Okay, I found a perfect little tripod for you guys on the coat hanger by the door so that you can actually see my fit. Um, but these are my Old Navy Heather Gray sweatpants. They are so comfy. I am obsessed with Old Navy sweats right now, like I said. I've got my Reeboks that have the palm leaves on them. My green Aeropostale hoodie because it is St. Patrick's Day weekend and it is the 200th anniversary 
of the parade in Savannah and I'm sadly missing it. So love to all of my Savannah friends and fam. I miss you guys. Wish I was there, but it's not too bad outside. So hoodie should be all right, but let me show you guys my Taylor Swift speak now tea. I'm absolutely obsessed with this graphic that gives haunted vibes. And then on the back, we have the speak now letters on the the friend fist bump so yeah that is my outfit i am just waiting on my lift now to take me to get coffee um but yeah i brought my leotard and tights in my bag with me because like i said i just don't want to have tights on for an extra three hours today i just can't be bothered so i'm gonna change at the restaurant after i eat um, and then I also have shorts in my bag just in case so I can keep the top of this outfit the same but throw on shorts if it gets warm later. So that's the plan. Bags are all packed but we need one more thing and my best friends will know this already but I call these my emergency Pop-Tarts. I always have emergency Pop-Tarts in my purse or in my bag, just in case you get hangry and you need a little sugar boost. I don't know, it's just the best thing to have in your bag. So I don't know how long we're gonna be at the studio today or if we'll have a break that we're gonna need a snack for, but emergency Pop-Tarts pack just in case. of the JW Marriott slash convention center that's on the riverfront. Um, I put on my leotard and tights, so I'm all ready to go. And I'm also rapid charging my phone because it was dying. I got so much fun exploration footage 
And I also filmed an Instagram reel that was really fun. So if you wanna check that out, I'll leave my Instagram linked in the description box. Go and check out my Instagram. Um, I am just laying on the floor, getting in some extra stretching while I wait for my phone to charge. It's about 11.50 and the studio is going to open at 12.15. So I'm gonna walk back to Ballet Arkansas here in just a minute, but I thought I may as well spread out on the floor where I have endless space and get in my stretching started, get it, get it going here. So I don't know how much space I'll have once we get into Ballet Arkansas itself. So I figured I would just take advantage of this nice quiet space. So um, I will speak to you in a few minutes when we are back on our way. All right, it's a beautiful sunny day. I think I will need the pair of shorts later. It's getting warm quick and I'm so happy. But we are on our way back up Main Street to Valley, Arkansas. I don't really know what's gonna happen today because they really didn't give any information about like how this is gonna run. Um, I don't know if they're making cuts during the class or if they're doing some contemporary and some classical or they're doing repertoire. It literally didn't say anything. Um, it just said wear professional ballet attire. So I have no idea what's about to happen but we're gonna walk up, get registered, get checked in, get ready to go. Also, I'm kind of hoping for a number that's not in the 20s this time because Houston, I was number 25 and Louisville, I was number 21 and I got cut from both of those auditions. So maybe if we get a different number in a different set of digits, maybe we'll have better luck this time. shook right now I don't even know where to start that was both the most fascinating and interesting and unexpected experience ever that I have had this audition season so far but it was amazing and I have to tell you about it later once we're back at the Airbnb because I just I need to process what just happened and I need some lunch, so. Here's the other bridge. Guys, look at the auditorium. This is one of the auditoriums that they perform at. And look, there's little ballet dancers out front. Oh, that's huge. Oh my gosh. It looks like the, the freaking Lincoln Memorial. Here they are. It's called In the Wings. And they're so pretty. Look at this theater though, guys. Wow. Guys, how did I miss the actual sign on the side of the building earlier this morning? Oh man. Okay, here's the studio we were dancing in earlier. As you can see, it's kind of narrow. Um, but I'll tell you more about that soon when we get back to the Airbnb, but I just wanted to catch a glimpse of it because everything happened so fast today, I didn't get a chance to sneak a peek. They also said this is one of their other theaters that they perform in. They perform at several different places, so again, I'll tell you guys about it when we get home. All right, guys, get your snacks and get comfortable on the couch with me with our 
duck friends. <laughs> we're back at the Airbnb. Um, we're going to chat. This experience has blown my mind. Um, this has been different than any other audition experience I've had thus far. And I cannot believe what we just experienced. I, I'm speechless. I'm actually speechless. Ballet, Arkansas. Wow. Um, first of all, when we got there, there was only 16 people, only 16. That was crazy. When we checked in the production manager, Colin, I believe is his name. He had us like already pulled up on his computer and he had everyone's name associated with a number. So that's how I got number 10. And I was like, yes, a different number. Like I said earlier, um, I, I don't even know where to start. Um, basically we got in and Colin opened up the studio for us and he was like, you can stand anywhere you want. The world is your oyster. There's only 16 people. We're not going to line you up by number because that's what has been happening at the last couple of auditions with when there's been more people. But we all went in, stood wherever we wanted. I ended up having my own bar because I stood on the wall by the mirror. So I had a bar all to myself. That was mind blowing. Um, and the executive artistic director taught class. I forgot his name, but his wife was watching in the corner. She, I guess, is another artistic director that helps him. I don't know. I have to look at the website again. Um, she was in the corner with her laptop and everyone's name pulled up, kind of like making notes, I guess. Um, and so was Colin, the production manager. He had his laptop up too. And then on the other side of the room, there were two older ladies watching. I don't know who they were. They didn't really say, but maybe they were on the board or something. I don't know. But they were watching. And this class, the best way I can describe it is that it was not any specific technique. It was not Balanchine. It was not Vaganova. It was not Chiquetti. It was just vibes. That's the best way I can describe it. I have never had a class like that in my like 20 years of dancing uh, and dance training, never. I have no idea what just happened. And the best way I can describe it is I'll have to show you a couple of examples of combinations that this man gave us at bar and for jumps because I don't know how to describe it. I literally could not describe it if my life depended on it. It's like if you've seen the movie Center Stage like, you know how Jody is like, at the end of the movie, she ends up dancing for um, Ethan Stifel's America or um, contemporary company or whatever. That's kind of the vibe I was getting. Um, it's the best way I can describe it, but I'll have to show you a couple of examples. But he let us do our own plies, which was mind blowing. I've never been to an audition where they said, do your own plies. And I think that's why bar started out well for me because I did my own plies and felt good. Um, after that, it was like all bets were off. He goes, we're going to have a chill class. It was absolutely not a chill class. <laughs> I've never taken a class like that in my life. Um, but surprisingly, I got warm. I wasn't frustrated about it for most of the class, which also shocked me because normally when random stuff like that happens, I get really agitated and irritated at it, but I kind of enjoyed it a little bit. And I was like, what is happening? Like what alternate universe am I in? And then the only thing that did frustrate me a little bit was jumps because they were quick tempos, which I can hang with. I can make myself move fast when I need to, but all of it was just hard. Like the jumps were hard. The combinations of steps that he chose were so freaking hard to do. And Grand Allegro was just so, that was the only one that did me in. I was like, I love Grand Allegro and getting to leap. But when I feel like I have, I'm not able to travel across the floor, it frustrates me a little bit. So I'll show you a couple of examples when we get done chatting. But the most mind blowing thing of the day was after this was over, everyone took the whole class because there was only 16 of us. Who needs to make cuts? Um, he taught from 1 to 2.30, and this thing was supposed to go until 4. And he goes, we did reverence, and he said, 
go put your warm ups on, get some water, relax for a minute and come back and sit on the floor and like, we'll chat. And I was like, we'll chat, what? <laughs> this never happens at an audition. Um, so we did that, we came back at 2.30 and we all sat on the floor and we were just kind of looking at each other like, what, what is about to happen? And the next half an hour, half an hour, this man and his wife and Colin, the production manager, stood at the front of the room and they described everything in detail about the company to us. They described what they're doing next season, what they're looking for in the company, how the company's growing, um, company day-to-day -day life, pay, benefits, literally everything that you could possibly need to know about joining Ballet Arkansas. And I was just sitting there probably with my mouth hanging open because here's the thing, this is the ideal company situation that I was just talking about in the last vlog when I was telling you guys how nice it would be to dance for a place like this. He literally ticked all the boxes for me. I was just sitting there, like I said, probably with my mouth hanging open because first of all, um, there's about 20 company dancers, he said, and they're growing. So they're actively looking for people to make it bigger. They're expanding their studio space next year. They just had some construction start, so they're gonna have bigger studio space for rehearsals. Um, there, He told us the whole season for next year, what the plans are, Nutcracker, Romeo and Juliet, a bunch of contemporary performances and a um, company member choreography showcase, which is so exciting to me. I can't believe they know what the whole season is for next year in March and they're, they're telling it to us. That would never happen at my current company, never. And I was just like, wow, that's awesome. That's so exciting. He started talking about how they try and fit everybody they hire. Like they look at your resume and say, like if it was me getting hired at Ballet Arkansas, they would see on my resume that I have experience in educational outreach and I'm a ballet teacher and I have a master's in education. So they would probably put me in the group of dancers that works in educational outreach in their spare time. And you get paid for that in addition to your dancer pay. So yes, they get paid but you get paid extra for teaching and educational outreach and like anything else that you do besides that. So like your, all of your employment would be through Ballet Arkansas, but you're getting paid for all of it separately. And I was like, oh my gosh, that would be so cool. Like they could look at my resume and be like, yeah, she could totally do this for us. So they're looking for people with multiple qualities that in, like he said, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do anything extra for us. You can also just dance and like do your own thing. You don't have to do that, but you absolutely can. And we will put you into a good fit for your skill set. And I was like, I literally, my mouth was hanging open. Also, they get 25 to 30 pairs of point shoes per season provided. Right now, I get zero pairs of point shoes provided to me. I have to pay for them myself, and my shoes cost $108 a pair. Like, that's $2,500 worth of point shoes that they would be providing for me. Letting that sink in again for a minute, because again, I'm in shock. Um, but you get paid for all your stuff. You get your shoes provided. Then he starts talking about health benefits. You get basic like health benefits, like if you get sick or whatever, but you also get chiropractic care, you get PT, you get massage therapy. And like that's, you can go see those people on a weekly basis. They're just at the studio. Like, excuse me. The way he described it, he was like, yeah, the chiropractor's here. You can like go see him off the side of the floor, like get adjusted and then come back into rehearsal. And I was like, what? And then also you can get mental health care covered. Mental health, that's huge in the dance world. You don't hear that ever. 
So that's so good. They have such good health benefits of all kinds and taking care of their dancers. He did say they follow union standards that AGMA um, has, even though they're not a part of AGMA, they still follow the union standards, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, but that explains a lot. Like you can tell it's they're prioritizing taking care of their dancers and treating them like humans. And I just thought that was the best thing I've ever heard in my life because I was just talking about this in one of my last vlogs. I, I tell you, I could not believe the words that were coming out of this man's mouth. I was just like, no freaking way to everything he said. I was like, I was sitting there like, yes, oh my gosh, that's a great idea. Oh my gosh, I can't believe they do that. Like, are you for real? Like, I was just in shock the whole time we were sitting on the floor there. Um, what else am I forgetting? I feel like I'm forgetting something. Um, but yeah, if I danced for Ballet Arkansas, all my boxes would be checked. I could live like how I've envisioned. And that's the phrase he kept using over and over was quality of life when he was talking about all this. And I was like, absolutely, quality of life like providing a good quality of life for their dancers. And I was just like, wow, this is cool. So freaking cool. Um, company class is like during the week, almost every day. He said the schedule is 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And oh, the wildest thing yet is they, he said when, when they put out the roster, they use an app. They use some kind of theater app. Um, and I guess Colin does a lot of this as production manager, but like they know, they put out casting stuff for like a good majority of the season, like immediately. So you know what you're going to be rehearsing because he said they're more than likely rehearsing like two, two shows at a time. So they'll put out casting like as soon as you get hired and you can look at it through a link in this app that they give to you. So he said, you'll know your casting and you'll know your rehearsal schedule for like the next couple of months. What? I can't even get my current company to give us a rehearsal schedule most of the time. Like we don't have a rehearsal schedule and the show that we currently are rehearsing we did not get a cast list until two months into rehearsal. So I was just sitting there like, are you serious? Like that is the best thing I've heard in my entire life. That is so organized. How he, I can't like, I'm just, I'm processing all of this. And I'm like, I cannot believe that they have ticked every single box. And then he goes, do you, does anyone have questions? And we were like, no. <laughs> Who has questions? Like, this is literally like almost the perfect setup. And it's a small company with like 20 people in it. And I, when I tell you, I had to take the whole afternoon to process this information and how I was just thinking about all of this. And here we are. I just, I cannot believe it. I just cannot believe he said all of that. I'm in shock. But let me show you a couple of combination examples that I'm talking about, because it, it won't make sense unless I show it to you. <laughs> okay, so here's an example of a bar combo. I'll do the best I can to remember it, because it was so much work for my brain, you guys. But it, I kind of enjoyed how it, was like it forced me to pay attention but nothing was too complex so this is like the Ron de Jam fondue that we did and I was like not mad at it for some reason but like on one side he started with fondue so we did like a little fondue front fondue side pas de bourree on turn on and then slide out stretch all the way down, blah, blah, blah. And then we did three round de jambes on the floor, passe, 
over whatever. And then we would start the other side. And we did like fondue, blah, blah, blah. Cadre, stretch, down and up, three round de jambes, passe. And then he sometimes would do a part two. So I think, I think there was a part two for this one that was kind of, it was like passe, passe, develop a side and some kind of other turnaround, blah, 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 whatever. And then we did the other side, passe. Oh, it was passe, passe, develop a side. And then reverse that, prep, turn on de don, and then soutenu to do the other side of part two. So like, you see what I mean? Like it, it wasn't anything difficult. It was just like, the patterns were odd, but somehow not that bad. I don't know. The jumps though. Mm. We did this one, I'll show you a petit allegro and I'll show you the grand allegro that we did that made me want to pull my hair out. Like, okay, so let me angle this down so you can see my feet a little bit more. But petit allegro, this was so freaking hard nobody could freaking do this you guys like <laughs> or at least the end the beginning was normal so we did like glissade jeté pas de bourré pas de bourré pas de chat brisé front soutenu and then we did that to the other side glissade jeté pas de bourré pas de bourré but part two, part two, we somehow ended up on the right leg again. I don't know how, but we did a chape fourth without changing legs, turn a chape fourth, change legs, pirouette, close back, then do the other side right away. Fourth, fourth, pirouette, close back four times. Fourth, fourth, pirouette, close back. Fourth, fourth, pirouette, close back. I, when I tell you nobody got those pirouettes and that fourth turning thing, nobody could do it. Nobody. Bless this man, he stopped and gave us corrections throughout the class about each of his combinations. He could not help us with that one. We were just like, um, sir. <laughs> I don't know if this is possible. And we were in point shoes. Like, please tell me how that was possible. Um, Grand Allegro was very short. It was literally just four counts, basically. And we had to do it across the floor. And all it was, was tombe fourth around, pas ciseau into a fuete, step soda shop and do it again and again, like four times across. So from your soda shop, go to fourth around, pop ciso up, <laughs> soda shop. I was so irritated at that one because the way it was like, a lot of his jump combinations were turning or twisting. And I was like, can we just face the mirror? I would like to just like jump. Like, I would just like to face one way for a second. We did some other one that had like a pas de chat on turn on that was very Balanchine. I couldn't really do that one, but you guys see what I mean? Like this class was, it was hard. Most of it did not frustrate me though. It was just hard in an interesting way. I've never had a class like that. so. I forgot your name, sir. I'm sorry, but like, really interesting class. Really interesting. <laughs> um, fascinating. Color me fascinated. Like, as a dance teacher, I was like, I felt like I was studying. Like, I, f I felt like I was studying this man's combinations and being like, what? How does your brain work? How does your brain actually work? Because when I teach, I would never think to do any of that. <laughs> That's for sure. I can't wait to teach my high schoolers this week when I go home and be like, guys, 
listen to what we did in this class because it makes no sense, but it made sense at the same time. I don't know. So I'm gonna actually wrap up this particular video here because I'm dividing this trip into ways that make more sense. Um, so the vlog doesn't get too long because I, I know not all of you probably wanna watch the extra content. Um, if you do, great, stick around for another video. But this will be the end of the audition portion of this trip. Um, I'm shocked. I had no idea this experience would be anything like this, but I am pleasantly surprised. I'm very excited to hear. Oh, and the one more thing I'll tell you guys. They did tell us at the end, hey, we're going to talk over this for the next two weeks. We're going to email everybody in this class with a response. And then we're hoping to have our roster for next season by April 4th. So we have a definitive date by which we will know <laughs> about the results of this audition, which is honestly the best thing I've ever heard in my life. So we shall see. We shall see what happens. I'm excited to hear what they thought of me. So I will sign off this particular audition vlog here and I will see you guys tomorrow or in a couple days whenever you watch the next part for a little bit of exploration in downtown Little Rock. So thanks so much for watching and coming with me to this audition and keeping me sane. <laughs> and I will see you very soon. Bye.